Hey there, I'm Addy. I run a couple different primary YouTube channels over at Eplus Fox for tech and Lost Saves for gaming. I have a couple others that I mess around with. I make music sometimes. I've been a photographer for 20 years. I'm on a podcast with my buddy BBK Dragoon, and I've just launched a cooking and food blog and YouTube channel. I generate a lot of data, which requires a lot of storage. And over the years, I've partnered with a couple different NAS companies, but primarily Synology to showcase their disk station NAS units and to have kind of reduced the costs because while my storage needs have continued to scale rapidly over the years, my budget for addressing those needs has not necessarily scaled with it. Y'all have expressed some concerns about Synology over the years, and I've taken them seriously. I've looked into things, and for the most part, the, the cons have not outweighed both my personal investment of acquiring units more cheaply or free for myself to utilize here in the studio, and more importantly, the easy turnkey solution for me to offer you, the viewer, who maybe doesn't have a whole lot of experience with this, in order to utilize in your environment, home, whatever. That kind of changed. I've officially broken up with Synology as a sponsor as a result of their choice to start vendor locking what hard drives you can use with their NAS devices to only their specific hard drives. That is too puff and smoke up your own behind, too lost in the sauce as it was, and that is the deal breaker for me. That is the final straw. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I am no longer working with them. I, I was actually about to get a new NAS in to use here in the studio, and I've elected not to work with them anymore. The PR people I've worked with over the years have been mostly great. Got no nothing against them, just that is a business policy that I can no longer support. So putting money where my mouth is, not only am I not taking in anything from them, I have spent a ridiculous amount of money and we're gonna build a new NAS here for my workflow because my Unraid box, which was built from a janky old Norco disc shelf I got from Wendell over at Level 1 Tech's basement that has been failing for a long time and a bunch of random discs I've acquired over the years, it's finally kind of on its way out. And while I'll keep using it for Jellyfin and things like that, I need a more secure solution for my my work storage, my my important data. So I have here the John's Bow N5. This is a very strange looking chassis. Now I have a server rack that I keep most things in. I was gonna go with a rack mounted unit, but to get the chassis that did what I want and with the rails and everything was gonna be like upwards of a thousand bucks and I still have to prioritize being economical here. Money doesn't grow on trees. And this chassis was only like 300 bucks at most. Supports 12 hard drives, pretty substantial motherboards, despite the small size. Nice little wood veneer here if you're into the retro wood grain aesthetic. So that is the case we're going with. I've got my old, old Intel Core i9-13900K mother er, processor and the Asus ROG Strix Z790E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard that I used for my previous build. You all may know that I recently upgraded to the AMD 9950X 3D in my gaming and streaming rig here in the studio. That is staying in there, so using Intel over here on this rig. A little bit overkill, especially for just a NAS, but this will be running some containers for, hopefully at least, eventually a failover for Jellyfin, and I'm hoping I can get my, my kiddos Minecraft server moved over here because it does not run well on the Threadripper rig in my Unraid box because of being mostly single core focused, so thread performance will help here. I did my research, and apparently you can just barely fit in the Dark Rock Pro 5 CPU cooler. Nice little tower cooler here, so that's what we're going with there. And then I've got about, in this magical chest right here, I haven't actually opened this yet. Oh man, look at that. That is 312 terabytes of storage, 12, 26 terabyte Seagate Exynos, I believe, recertified drives. Now, originally I was gonna be completely anti-using any refurb or recertified drives because I really wanna be able to trust my work storage here. But I spoke to many members of our community and in the Home Lab channel on my Discord server, and many of you all have said you've had just as good, if not somehow better luck with the recertified drives than even new drives. And they are they also come from more diverse like manufacturer dates, so you are a little bit more protected against them all dying at once. So 312 terabytes for the across 12 drives for the 12 slots in this case. Plus I've got dual two terabyte WD NVMe drives for metadata. Uh, this is gonna go just in a RAID one. 
uh, for metadata, which is basically where all your files are across all these drives in the ZFS file system that TrueNAS uses that I'm going to be using on here. You need basically a dedicated RAID just for the metadata so it can find files faster. And apparently that eliminates the need for any sort of SSD caching whatsoever. So between that, the metadata and the boot drive or whatever, I'm going to have like 318 terabytes in this thing. It's going to be ridiculous. So I'm going to get to building. I, I feel like I'm forgetting parts. We'll figure it out as we go. And this is where my first mistake came into play, one that would cost me a fair bit of time here. In my rush to get this done today, as always, I made a mistake. A couple mistakes. This is a weird case. A few different ways, like the side panels attached with hex head screws instead of Phillips. When was the last time you've ever seen paper washers for your motherboard screws? The, the, the dumbest mistake is that I put the motherboard in. It still has the mounting hardware for the water cooler I previously used. Not for the air cooler I just picked up. The second one is that the power supply and the motherboard kind of need to go in a little late as you have to route power and SATA connections through this back panel here and you don't have a ton of access once you get the motherboard in. But also, I haven't picked a power supply. I have a, a, a tote of like mystery power supplies that hopefully one will work. I did not yet acquire any sort of SATA card. This motherboard has four SATA ports. I need 12. I don't think I have enough expansion cards that are gonna work on a motherboard with this limited number of lanes. This is not gonna get finished today. This Dark Rock Pro 5 CPU cooler is a beast. It's got a cool little magnet top that holds onto it to make like an airflow, airflow channel. The two fans actually plug into each other so that you can only plug one fan into the motherboard, which is great. The problem is you can then only orient it one way and even doing it that way, the fan power plugs do not reach any of the slots on my motherboard, nevertheless the specific CPU one. I don't know what is going on here, but I cannot orient this in a way that actually puts the, the fan plug next to the header. So I had to go get a four pin Y splitter to use as an extension because it wouldn't reach. Major complaint there that it didn't come with any sort of extension in the box because it absolutely needs it. The overall build went very smoothly. Once I stopped rushing around and making mistakes, I didn't have any real hangups or issues. The only weirdness was getting all the cables routed to the hard drive backplanes, but that wasn't even that big of a deal. The case held everything perfectly, gave me plenty of room for expansion, and was mostly a joy to work with once I figured out its quirks. The only modification I did here was to add an extra 120mm fan pushing air towards the LSI RAID card, as while it has a heatsink, there's virtually no airflow currently moving around it. A little airflow heading that way ensures I won't have any trouble with that card moving forward. That was an incredibly tedious and miserable hard drive installation process. I do not want to do that again anytime soon. I was going to go with an Intel Art Graphics card for graphics to get like video encoding in a VM or something, but I needed this LSI hard drive card to actually have enough SATA ports for everything. I don't think I need it. I think onboard graphics will do fine. I found a power supply which will hopefully work if everything's rigged up correctly. We've got a one terabyte boot SSD, two two terabyte SSDs for metadata, and the 12 hard drives. So I'm gonna get my TrueNAS flash drive and we're gonna try to get this going. Power supply on, let's hope we don't get any magic smoke. 
Motherboard is on power button. All right, we should get my clear CMOS while I'm back here. Not getting any video output. I do have a green boot light. So it should be booting. Could be iGPU doesn't want to operate. It's always a possibility. Oh, yo, we got a post. All right. SSD or flash drive with TrueNAS is on. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All twelve terabyte, all twelve twenty-six terabyte drives are detected. Both two terabyte and the one terabyte. Everything is detected. First try. Holy cannoli! All right, all right. Everything is looking great so far. I am just going to go to. Boot straight into the flash draft. This is awesome. The fans are not quiet, but stuffed in my server rack, it should be fine. TrueNAS scale installation. Wow. All right. I was not expecting it to just... When, when was the last time everything got detected the first try? Especially with this many drives, this many points of failure. All right, we'll jump into TrueNAS installation. I'm not gonna lie, I expected there to be a bit more drama or troubleshooting to this video. Instead, this process was quite literally as easy as it gets. TrueNAS Scale's installer took only a few options to set up, and then it pushed me to the web UI where I could immediately access it on another computer. And the setup from there was very straightforward too. Despite having tons of tech experience and having set up Unraid before, I always shied away from building ZFS pools and using TrueNAS because it seemed really complicated, it sounds really technical, and I don't want to risk my data to my own mistakes. But apparently it's not. In the ZFS settings, I set up a VDEV, or group of disks with the appropriate RAID configuration, to use all 12 of my spinning hard drives with two of them used for parity and redundancy. And then I skipped most of the optional stuff, except for the metadata VDEV, where I chose to do a mirrored RAID across my two 2 terabyte NVMe drives, and that was it. Within like 10 minutes total of setup, I was up and running with a beautiful and easy to use web UI that quickly displays my network traffic, CPU temperature and usage, storage pool and usage, RAM usage, and so on. This thing is glorious. I headed to shares to make a new share on my storage pool for my footage archive storage, started up the SMB and NFS services for accessing shares on Windows and Mac and Linux respectively, and everything just worked. I was able to mount my share on my Mac and start copying footage off local drives right away. As simple as this whole thing is, it can get more complicated if you want, with optional VDEVs for different functions within TrueNAS, the ability to set up multiple storage pools in the first place, advanced permissions management, usage reporting, as well as running backup tasks. This whole process has convinced me to make an exact duplicate of this server soon to set up a backup task for, for on this one so that it just clones to another one. One day, I'll get there. There's also the Instances section to run VMs and the Apps Marketplace where you can download apps for our services, backup tools, some weird AI things, Plex and Jellyfin, and even Minecraft servers. This is perfect as I wanted to use the fast single core performance of the 13900K in here to migrate my kiddo's Minecraft server to. I still have some quirks to figure out with it. It's not working yet, but I'm very excited. The app availability is a lot more limited than what you'd find in Unraid's community apps, but it's a great starting point. This is my message to you. If you, like me, have been putting off making your own NAS because it seemed like too much added work, give this a shot. Grab an old computer, throw some hard drives in it, and give TrueNAS a try. It could not be more simple. It's arguably simpler than setting up Synology Disk Station at this point. I'm not kidding. I feel so empowered by this experience that I'm about to grab another old system I had lying around and install TrueNAS on it for a secondary box for some really fun upcoming projects but that'll have to be for another video. In the meantime, check out this video to see why I had to abandon Plex for Jellyfin last year. Come check out my cooking blog and YouTube channel, and remember to be kind, rewind.